So my name is John Horcher. I am with uh, Virtual Cove. My partner and I are here. We're working on data visualization in immersive reality. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you, John. Great. Welcome, Thank John. you. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, Virtual Cove is dedicated to uh, visualizing data. And I have over 15 years of market experience in financial markets, primarily the equities. And um, what I think we have here is something really powerful to be able to make um, multivariate data immersively available. You may have seen Bob's presentation earlier. I'm going to do some of the presentation as well as do an actual demo. So in 1609, Galileo invented the telescope. And what it gave was a whole new way of looking at the universe. We think immersive reality and data is really a whole new way of looking at analytics. Uh, our patent-pending uh, patent method um, enables you to really look at data in a completely different way. So what folks are used to doing now is looking at Excel pivot tables. And pivot tables are nice in that you can take one column of data, compare it to another column of data, and see what the outcome is. The problem with that is you're only looking really at two sets of data. Uh, you also see the charts up there, the famous Bloomberg charts, which are all over trading desks. The problem with those charts is somebody's looking at those charts and trying to figure out what happens in one point in one corner of one chart versus another chart that's on their desk. Uh, the typical solution now is to buy as many of these screens as you possibly can, put it on your desk, and I mean, these folks are brilliant, but they're definitely looking for a new tool. Uh, the business intelligence area, we think we, play a pretty pro we can play a pretty prominent role in. Uh, Tableau, for example, very flexible, you're able to look at all kinds of data, but you're still limited to that flat 2D screen. You're able to look at more bars and more lines and more pies, but again, it really isn't a breakthrough technology. Machine learning uh, has been very popular in the industry, and quant traders are really doing a, a lot of work. In fact, from what I understand of the trading volume, most of the work. Uh, the problem with machine learning is it doesn't really gain its own wisdom. It has to be your wisdom that you're imparting to the machine learning. And the machine learning also doesn't really uh, improve itself over time. So what we thought we'd do is go over a real uh, world response where you're not looking at data through a keyhole. So take, for example, a 50-column Excel spreadsheet. Um, if you wanted to look at those 50 columns, it could be, again, a kind of tabular data. It could be real estate data, it could be genetics data, it could be financial data. When you take that data and you look at four dimensions at once, you use a 4D plot, x-axis, y-axis, the size of the bubble as well as the color of the bubble, you're basically expressing four dimensions at once. If you were to do that with all of this data, um, and you would have all these 50 variables, 50 columns, it would be 230,000 4D plots. If you looked at each plot for five minutes, working eight hours per day, could take you almost a decade looking at all that data. And this research and the mathematics behind it is backed up by um, a tenured MIT professor who we're working with here at CSAIL. So that's a lot of time, that's a lot of analytics. People don't really do that. What we believe one can now do with immersive reality is look at 14 dimensions at once. And this is backed up by some of the work we did with data scientists. We talked to about 50 data scientists and tried to figure out what they're comfortable in terms of looking at. Um, when you look at the demo, it'll be on a flat screen. I apologize. It looks obviously much better in the HoloLens. Um, but those data scientists thought that 14 dimensions, 16 dimensions is something that someone could handle. But if you were to do it immersively, that same amount of data could be understandable in up to three days or less. And again, a shorter time frame, you're able to keep that data and understand that data in a better way. Okay? So why does this happen? Um, and Jim Heppelman was alluding to this in his demo and talk uh, yesterday morning. Um, when you use the visual cortex to look at this, you're using 30% of your brain, which essentially not, is not working as well as it could be or should be with a flat screen. You're just using more of your brain, and don't we all want to use more of our brain? So th the question really is, is this really hard to do? Um, and if you look over on the right, you'll see you drive a car every day. You're looking at, you know, 10, 15, 20 cars. Uh, each car is moving in the same direction, but weaving a little bit. There's directional blinkers going on. You're looking at your own dashboard. There might be pedestrians. There might be uh, foot pedals. Um, there might be gestures from other drivers, depending upon how you drive. Um, but you're able to handle a lot of data immersively now. So this is not such a huge leap for you. Conversely, on the left-hand side, when I play video games with my son long ago, um, 
it was hard to actually go fast in two dimensions and actually drive and not hit the, uh, the bumper there, the side. But my driving in the real world is obviously much better. Again, because in the, on the right side, you're using your visual cortex on the left-hand side, you're not. So what I'm going to do now is bravely uh, do a demo for you. I'm sure you guys in the audience are kind of like, is this guy crazy enough to try this again? So guess I will try it. Okay, so here is how we look at data. There's about a two to three second delay in the data. These are what we call data tubes. And it's the standard in Poor's 500 over 20 trading days. So you're looking at 10,000 bars. Um, there's the standard Poor's 500 are basically broken down into 10 sectors. And if I hold my head <laughs> uh, so it doesn't move around on you, hold on a second. Place. And so now when I look at the data, I can actually move through the data and look at the tickers. Um, it's 20 days of data, as I mentioned. So you, as, as you go back in the slices of data, the most recent trade data, like today's closing date, is right here. And you move back to 20 days. The length of the bar is the closing price. The color of the bar indicates volume. And the, um, the, the depth, obviously, is over time. And you can see each individual ticker, how it's traded over time. Again, this is 10,000 bars at once, and it's not too much to handle behind uh, these AR devices. You can also look at different correlations across different sectors. You can also look back in time. When we look at the industrials, we some see something as an ADT ticker right there that bounced up. Once ADT bounced up, other stocks in the uh, sector also bounced up, and you also see an increase in volume. This, by the way, came from earlier this year where um, I think it was the end of February, trading volume was very light. So you see all the tubes at the end, they're all kind of white and yellowish because that indicates low volume. And as you move through the calendar toward me, uh, you see higher trading volume. So again, it's not too much to handle when you have these kinds of, uh, of things in front of you. And you know we talk to ourselves when we're on stage, so I'll say sessions. So what I'll now bring up is another representation of the Standard & Poor's 500, but more along the lines of what a fundamental portfolio manager would want. Of course, the, the, the financial world and equities is broken up into uh, fundamentals and quant portfolio managers. This might be more relevant to a fundamental portfolio manager. You'll see each bubble is a stock. And you see on the x-axis, price earnings ratio. You see on the z-axis, price sales. You see on the y-axis dividend yield. You also can see up at the top the coloration of price to book. Further to the left is blue. Further to the right is green in terms of price to book. I can also bring up a legend. And this legend shows me that I have eight different factors that I'm looking at. Some of the harder ones to understand are book value, which is uh, defined by the Z angle. Uh, I also have color, which is price to book, as I mentioned. Opacity, or translucency, is also something you can pick up in a full uh, augmented reality way. And I also have glow, which is EBITDA. Again, we can plot uh, dozens of these. Uh, we're trying to figure out from a user experience what is the most reasonable amount of, uh, of data that we can put at people. Um, you can also see, again, on a price earnings basis, Amazon. It's hard to see from where you are. Amazon and Facebook are the same, but Google is lower in terms of a price earning valuation for this one date, one slice in time. Size of the bubble equals market cap, so some of the bigger names, obviously, you know. Again, it's a little difficult to see it from where you are. Um, after this demonstration, we'll be out in the demo area, and we'd be happy to uh, show you some of, the, uh, some of the visualizations we've come up with. Great. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time.